Okay, so your relations can be represented different ways. And the first one is by an arrow diagram. And for that, we take the first value, which is really the X value. So let's write X up the top there. And we got 2511 like that. And we'll put a circle or an oval around them like that. The ordered pairs are actually written there. So I'll do that in a minute. And the Y we write here like that. And then we draw an arrow to link them. So this is three, seven, 13, like that. So we join them like that. And there will be an arrow putting, put in the middle there. Okay, so this is an example of an arrow diagram. The arrows are in the middle here. Now for your ordered pairs, um, let's just write them again. So two, three. Oh, we could write them like this. R. Let's use a notation. R. So the first pair is two, three. You see now we're using said notation. Then we've got five, seven. And R represents relation, by the way. And eleven, thirteen. Like that. So you can write out a relation like that. So if you've got this information, it's very easy to rewrite it in this form. And also you can go that way in that form. A table, well, a table could just be X, Y, and then we have the numbers. So two, three, five, seven, and 11, 13. That's just a table, right? Okay, you've seen that, seen those before. It could go the other way too, it could go across. So that's an example of a table to show the numbers. And the one you see most often is graphs. Okay, so we could make up our X, Y axes like this, X, Y, and they're easy to put on. So we've got, what are they? Two, three, five, seven. So two, three. So one, two, one, two, three is here. And label it. Then you've got five, seven, two, three, four, five, seven is here. It may be a straight line. It may not. It doesn't have to represent anything in particular. I just made up stuff. And 11, 13, right? So five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and sorry, 11, go back here and 13, up there somewhere. It may be a straight line, it may not. If it's a straight line, then we can calculate what is the relation because the relation would be the equation, okay? But in this case, it's just three random points. So that's four ways that you can represent a relation. The one you'll see most of is A and D. So I think these are the two common ones. I won't often use a table, not so much. And a set of ordered pairs, uh, you'll see this sometimes written in this form. So basically a relation is just the relationship between pairs of numbers, that's it. And you've seen graphs before because you would know for example, when you have a polynomial, there's still a bit of notation, y equals x squared. Now we could make up a table of numbers, couldn't we? We could have zero, x and y, let's make a table. So this is a relation and just make up some numbers. So zero, if x is zero, y is zero. If x is one, y is one. If x is two, y is four. If X is minus one, Y is one. If X is minus two, Y is four. So then we will graph your point. So this would be your table, right? So that's your table. And then you could graph your point. So zero, zero, one, one. And these are your numbers here. Then you have two, four, zero, zero there. You have minus one, one, 
minus two, four, like that. Yep, so you could have your points here. And we know that's going to be a parabola, right? So this is actually your relation here. This is how they're related. Like that. So you could write zero, R uh, zero for the first one. One, R uh, one, two, R uh, four. And then in each case, you'd say R is Y equals X squared, like that. So we'll do more on that later anyway, but that's just another way to look at it. So relations you've seen already in polynomial, all polynomials are relations. We're just looking at it in a different way. Okay, so for this example, um, we'll go through it quickly because I've done an example already. So you've got two sets, one, two, three, four, one, four, nine, 16. And we want to, the relation is actually here, is a square, these are square numbers. So when you square two, you get four. When you square three, you get nine. When you square four, you'll get 16. When you square one, you get one. So the relation is just the word square. And as an example of the solution, so the arrow diagram, as I said before, we've got one, one, which is here. Then we've got two, four, which is here. Three, nine, which is here. Four, 16, which is here. So A, square of B as your relation here written in the middle. So your table, as we saw here, one, one, two, four, three, nine, four, 16 table numbers and we can use the table to draw our graph so in each case you can easily draw the graph using that information oh and that's read as the square of two is four as an example of this one here so for your graph easy to do we've got the two sets of numbers set a set b Normally A is X. The first one we write is normally X and the set B is Y. And then we just put the numbers in like that. They're not joined, but you can see they're obviously related as a, that's gonna be a quadratic as well. So that's Y equals X squared, like the previous one I mentioned. So there's four ways to do your diagrams, your relation diagrams, just come down to exercise one. Okay, you want to start here for a minute. And I'll, I'll go through some of the answers. And write so in question one, write out set A in roster form. Your answer key is in the back, I think, isn't it? So take a look in the back if you want to check your own work and multiples of two. Well, that would be an infinite set, that one. So put your numbers in if you can there. And then what about question two? So in this case, we want to make an arrow diagram and a set of ordered pairs. You don't need to do the, the diagram for that, not the graph, don't worry about that. Okay, I'll give you 10 minutes to think about that and then you work on that for a while. Then I'll come back in five or 10 minutes. So if you've got a question, you can ask. So how's it going? Should be no problem. So let's look at the questions. Let's make this a bit bigger again. So you need to get this file from the line group if you haven't got it otherwise it's going to be a hassle to write everything in a notebook which you can do but you're better off getting this file and printing it um, okay so question a the prime numbers less than 20 remember one is not prime 
So two, three, five, seven, 11, 13, 17, 19, like that. That's all. B is a set of factors of 16. So 16 is what? One times 16, two times eight, four times four. So one, two, four, eight, 16. Like that. And the multiples of two, well, this is an infinite set, isn't it? So that would just be two, four, six, and three dots after that. So that's all you need to do for question one. Question two, uh, diagrams. Now, it's a bit scrappy, so I'm going to redo it. So we'll make the relation diagram first, the arrow diagram. So make two ovals, something like that. Okay, now these are in order. So these are the postcodes. So for Nantabury, the town, you draw an arrow across to 11000. I put them in order so you don't have to guess which is which. Bangboi Tong is BBT. And that's 11110. Bang Kuei, that's 11130. I should put the arrow out there. 11130. Bang Yai. Let's just talk to my God on one. Okay. Bang Yai. So BY. And so that's 11140. Park Red. PK. You can use abbreviation. And that's going to be 11120. And Sinoi, which is 11150. So you see, it doesn't have to be numbers. It can be um, just words, okay, statements like this. And then the other way was a set of ordered pairs. So for your ordered pairs, I won't write them all out, but your ordered pairs. Let's do the first one. So just R for relation. And your first ordered pair would be Montepuri, MN, and then the value 11000. Like that. And then you list the other ones here and put in the brackets like that. So they're your ordered pairs. So just do that. And to save time, I won't write them all out. And in B, you've got P and Q. So whatever's written first, you put first for this kind of problem. So we'll have P then Q. So four, five, six goes in a circle. And then 16, 25, 36. And you can see these numbers are getting squared, aren't they? So in this case, four will match with the first number, five with the next, and six with the next. So they won't be mixed up. So just go in order like that. So four, five, six, 16, 25, 36. And your ordered pairs would be 4, 16, 5, 25, and then 6, 36, like that. So that's your relation. Next one. Now, now these need to be matched up 
correctly. So this one you need to think a little bit about. So if you haven't done it, you pay attention. So two, three, and six. And odd, even, prime. So odd, even, prime. So in this case, we need to see which one is which. So two, well, two is even. Okay, but two's also prime, isn't it? So we'll go down twice. It's okay, you can do that. Now three is an odd number. Three is also prime. So you go down there. And then six is even only. So it looks a bit messy, but you match up according to what the actual number is in this case. Okay, so you got to be careful of one like this. Okay, and then obviously with your relation, we'll have two even, two prime. So you've got quite a few to write out. Two even, two prime, three odd, three prime, three odd, three prime, like that, six even as the last one. So quite a few ordered pairs, more than there are of the actual numbers in the question. It's only three here, but you end up with five ordered pairs when you write them out. Okay, so I'll leave it, I won't go too fast, but fast enough for you to copy or slow enough. So now we have cars. So let's see how these match up. So Honda, well, Honda City, because City is a kind of Honda. Yaris, Toyota Yaris, Nissan Almira, Mitsubishi Mirage, and Suzuki Swift. So these all go in order. So you're not going to see a Toyota City, so because they don't make that model. So each T is specific for each S. So then for your S, we'll put first. So you're gonna have Honda, Toyota, Nissan, Honda, Toyota, Nissan, Mitsubishi, Suzuki, and then T will go here. And we've got City, Yaris, Almira, Mirage, Swift, and we just match them up using arrows like that. Any problems with that? And for your relation, just write them out, the pairs. So Honda City, I'll just use shorthand, Honda City, Toyota Yaris, Nissan Almira, and so on. Mitsubishi and then Suzuki at the end. So just put out your list of ordered pairs. It wouldn't make much sense to make a graph with that, would it, actually? So these are two appropriate ways to show it. Uh, so we'll talk about this until the end. Now, relations and functions, there's a difference, actually. All of the ones I've showed you are relations, but a function is a special, this is a special kind of, relation, a function, all right? And the best way to show you that is actually using graphs to show you the difference. And which is what we're mostly doing anyway. We're not worried about other things aside from graphs. So let's do a bunch of graphs. I'll just make up some stuff. Okay, so the first one you probably learned about was a linear graph like that. So this is linear. And then we've got, let's say, a quadratic. Just go that way. Quadratic. You can copy these down because I haven't really shown a lot of this. This is what I would normally write on the board at school anyway to de demonstrate this. And then we've got, say, the cubic. And let's say a basic cubic looked like that, didn't it? Like that. 
then we may have uh, maybe an absolute value graph. So just call this absolute value. It looks like a V shape. I'll teach you later. Okay. And then let's do some others that are a little bit different. Let's make up. Well, number one could be your sine graph. That goes like that. Sine X. So this is sine X. This is X. When we do trigonometry later, we do more on graphs. Okay, so there's some. Let me go above here. I'll scroll down a bit. Now, some other kinds could be a circle, couldn't it? There's another graph. All right, so circle. We have a quadratic here, a parabola. I should write parabola, actually. But the parabola can also go this way or this way as well. So we've got a parabola, but it's a different kind. Going to learn that in second semester. If we're ever back at school, I don't know, but we can do all this online anyway, not too hard. So then we could have ellipse. Like that. And that's another one from second semester. And another one, it looks like this. It's not a parabola. That's called a hyperbola. Right, the first thing to note that all of these are relations. These are examples of relations, all of them. We can write them in relation form. So we'll do, talk about that later, but all of these are relations, all of them. So basically any graph you could draw is a relation, a relationship between your pairs of numbers here. So here you could have four, six, that could be one number. All of them are made up of ordered pairs, aren't they? So all of these are relations, but they're not all the same. So can anyone tell me, for example, the difference between the circle and the cubic or the circle and this one? or the circle and this one here. Does anyone see the difference between the circle and these three here or any of these here, these ones here? Anyone? No one? So what we'll do, we'll show how they're different. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna draw a blue line with the highlighter like this. across the graph. Now, does anyone see a difference? Now, anyone can't see it or you're quiet or asleep or playing games? Intersections? Yeah, the intersection point is different, right? So if you look at these ones, how many times does it intersect? It's only one, isn't it? Here, one, 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 one. The sign as well, one, one, one. But look at these ones here. That blue line intersects two times. Two, here it's two. At this point, it's two. This one is two. This is two. And this is two here. Right? So there's a difference between intersecting once and intersecting twice or more than twice. Okay, so that means that the ones that intersect once, these ones here, right? The rest intersect twice. 
These ones are functions. So let me color that in. So all of these graphs here represent functions. The others do not. They're relations, but they're not functions. Okay, so you can see this is a subset, right? So your functions are actually a subset of all relations. So let me clear that out. So our time's gonna run out, but these are functions, the yellow in yellow. And what we did here is called the vertical line test. So if you draw a vertical line, you will cut your graph only once. That means it's a function. So it's really easy to tell when you have graphs, whether it's a function or not. And that's quite important for, it's quite important to know the difference or how they're related. So this is called the vertical line test. There vertical line test. So we draw a vertical line. If you cut the graph only once, it's a function. If it's not, it's not a function. That's basically it. Okay, but I'm filming this so you can check it out on the video later on. So that's what we just talked about here. So we got function as being a subset of all relations. There is another way as well and I probably should talk back about the graphs a little bit for that. Now, if we look carefully at, let's draw, let's draw two separate ones uh, here. So for an example of a function like that, for a function, this is a quadratic, so it's a function. This is a quadratic quadratic function. So for a function, each x value has only one y value. Very important. That's how we can define what is a function. So this x value here too, and if it's the if the relation is y equals x squared, this value will be four, won't it? And this is our x value. This x value too can only have one y value. In this case, it only has four. So if we were doing our diagram, we'd have two going only to four. There, it's not going to any other number. So this shows that it's a function. This is minus two, that can have four as well, no problem. That can go to four, but that minus two can only have one value, which is four in this case. So in this case, we have two numbers going to four, but this is acceptable in this case. So that will make more sense when we have the next lesson. But the algebraic method, which is mentioned up here. Now, for example, y equal, x equals y squared is not a function. Since if you have x equals four here, y actually has two values, not one. So it could be two squared, couldn't it? Two squared is four, but you could also have minus two. And this is not allowed. You can't have this situation where you have two y value for one x value. So in this case, our diagram would look like this. You would have a four, in X and in Y, you would actually have two and minus two, not allowed. This is not a function. So your X value can't have two Y values. This is not allowed. So this graph here is actually your parabola that way, which we'll talk about later on, this one here. But the linear is okay, linear function, always have one y value for each x value. So this is the vertical line test. Let's look at this quickly. We only have five minutes left and we'll continue uh, Wednesday, right? So this is your parabola on the side. When we cut your graph, 
we will see we intersect twice. So that means that this graph here is not a function, non-function, okay? This graph here is actually an exponential. It could actually be y equals one on x, a reciprocal graph. I didn't include that one previously, but reciprocal graph, we'll do that later. But again, you see, you only intersect once, which means it's a function. So this is a function, but this one is not. And it's, it's an important to know the difference for later on. So again, in this question, when we have a circle, when we cut a circle, we cut twice, which means the graph of a circle doesn't represent a function, it's a non-function. It's still a relation though, because relating X to Y values. And for the cubic, this is your cubic graph. When you draw your blue lines here, we'll cut the graph only once, which makes it a function. Okay, not that hard, is it? Understandable. Okay, well, it's only five minutes. So what you can do, we got five minutes. So how about you think about this for a little bit first, just question one, because we're gonna continue into the next period anyway. So you wanna tell me, use an algebraic method maybe, substitute at least three X values and circle whether it's a function or non-function. So for example, in question one, let's set X equal one, two, three. So half times one is a half plus two, two and a half. And two, two twos of, Two times a half is one, one plus two is three. And three and a half, two, three and a half. So if you actually made your diagram, you can see that each X value is only going to one Y value. So that's good. So each X only has one Y. So this makes this a function. And actually all linear, all linear equations are functions, all of them. So this is a function. And so we could highlight that answer there. And I think you'll find the same here. So if you want, just choose another three numbers, any numbers you want and see what happens. And then try this one and this one the same way. Okay, see how that goes for a while and see if you can answer that one and check your answer key. We only got three minutes. So see how that goes. And then we continue tomorrow. No worksheet just yet for this topic, but remember you have the worksheet for sets to send to me as well. Okay, a couple of minutes on that and we'll talk about it in a minute. And try your three values here. Like that. And then make sure each X value only has one possible Y value. And be careful in C and D when you do them. So we'll finish in a minute. So in question B, this is a quadratic. You should recognize that being a quadratic. So we know that goes something like this. So we know this will be a function. It's got to be a function. So if you let X is one and you put one in here, you'll get two plus five minus one, you'll get six. So there's no other possible number you can get when you use X equals one. And we'll do that three times and you'll get three different numbers here. So you can do that, but you're gonna have a problem with C and D. So if you think about C and D, let's clear that out of the way. So if X is, for example, if X is one, 
This can only have one Y value. We can't have two or more. So if X is one, you'll get three equals two Y squared, yes? So, but now you see Y squared is gonna give you three on two. But look what happens now. Remember back to grade nine, when you take a square root, you'll get two possible values here, three on two. So this is not allowed. This makes this a non-function because this is your parabola on the side. It looks like that roughly. So that means if X is one in your diagram for the X values, you're gonna get two possible Y values. You're gonna get root three on two, square root three on two, but you're also gonna get minus root three on two as well. And you're not allowed to have that when you have functions. That's not allowed. All right. And we'll talk more about why that's important tomorrow. And you can do the same for D. So try D as well. We only needed one value, actually, you see. I only needed one. So I know this is not working already. What's she coming in at the last minute? Okay, so for question D, you can try the same thing. The times run out. So if you put x equals one in here, you'll get y squared on four equals, bring the one over, you'll get eight. So y squared is four eighths of 32. So y will be plus or minus root 32. Again, not allowed because this x value should only have one y value, not two like this, okay? So that makes that a non-function. Both of those are non-functions. And that one was a quadratic and that's a function. All right, so I'm gonna stop there and we'll continue tomorrow. So you can work on your worksheet, I think, okay, that you got for sets. I think it's due Friday, isn't it? So when you finish that, send it straight to me, I can return it. because I like to start marking them very soon. All right, so we'll stop there, all right? And I'll, I'm recording this, so I'll send you today or tomorrow, but I'll fix up the file because I've got to edit it and stuff anyway.